We got a little puppy friend now. Hi, buddy. Hi. Where's your home? You want to come down to Mexico with me? This is part of the official CDT. It's like a five or six mile road walk. Much better than snow. You gotta go home. Go home. Go home. Come on. Go. Go home. Go home, pup. Come on. Go home. <laughs> go home. You can't come with me. Sorry, buddy. You can't come with me. Getting off this highway now. Getting onto this dirt road, and now it'll be dirt roads and trail for about the next 90 miles. This right here is where the Dead Man Peaks Ultra Marathon starts. I ran, let's see, it's 2019. Yeah, ran the 53 miler here. And then last year ran the 106 miler. That was two days after I finished um, hiking 2100 miles. And that was kind of how I knew that I could probably handle a calendar year triple crown. So I was able to hike, yeah, about 2100 miles in three months and then had a day off and then uh, ran the 106 miler and I won that race. And then a week after that, went and ran the rim to rim to rim in the Grand Canyon, which was about 45 miles. You go from the south rim to the north rim and back in a day. So being able to recover that quickly from doing 100 miles and then do another ultra. Um, that told me I could probably handle something like this. And yeah, really physically this year, I mean, everything's hard, but it hasn't been, um, I haven't been in nearly as much pain now as I was my first through hike on the Appalachian Trail. So it's amazing what the body can adapt to. And uh, after this, I think I'm gonna train up, do some uh, more ultras and things like that, and just see how much further you can push the body. Kind of looks like the Sphinx, if you don't really think about it. So this will be my eighth time through this stretch, because the 53 miler out and back, 100 miler was out and back uh, 26 miles twice. So that's six times. And then I hiked through here last year, so that's seven times. And now today will be eight times on this 26 mile stretch. Follow this ridge line over here, you drop down, and then that direction. I actually just had the race here last week, last weekend. You see all the flagging. That's to help keep the runners on the track. This part's pretty steep coming down.
I'm back in the desert, so back to dumping sand out of the shoe. So all that sand down in the shoe. I was definitely really hungry when I got into town in uh, Cuba because that was seven days of rationing food. So I got into town, I got two burgers from McDonald's because, uh, and then two foot long Subway sandwiches. So if you use the apps, you can get buy one, get one McDonald's and Subway. So did those and then I got two entrees at a Mexican restaurant and I had a, uh, not a pint, the bigger carton size thing of ice cream, ate almost all of that. Um, and that was, yeah, that was in the, that was the dinner. And then ate a ton for breakfast and carried out the Subway sandwich I'm gonna have now. Um, yeah, it's pretty incredible how hungry you can really get out here. Uh, gonna eat a lot more in Grants, need to catch up with those calories. snowed some more last night. Let's hope there's not too much snow up higher. I'm going up to about 10,000 feet again. So up on this mesa, I'm around 9,000 feet. Down below all that is uh, six, 7,000 feet. Makes a huge difference. Water is starting to get hard to come by. The side trail is about half a mile. Um, almost a full mile round trip. But it's a good spring down here. And it was, what, 13 miles since the last water? It's going to be like almost 20 to the next reliable water. So I have to drink a bunch here. And luckily it's a pretty cold day, so three liters should be plenty for um, that amount of walking. But that's a pretty long carry. Here's the tank. It's pretty good water. Nice and clear. About an hour from sunset, it's already getting really cold. Um, feels like mid-20s right now. Probably going to be in the teens, if not a little bit colder tonight. This is Mount Taylor up here. Official CDT goes around it, and there's an alternate to go over. I went up it last year. I'm gonna go around it this year because it's gonna be cold as hell tonight. Super depressing park. It's a brewery and a restaurant that is literally in a junkyard. I remember this gas station behind me. Came through here 2018. So the goal that year was bike, Arizona Trail, up to Canada. So Mexico to Canada on a bicycle and then hike the Continental Divide back down to Mexico. And actually ended up starting out here, Albuquerque. Biked all the way from Albuquerque out to here, I hadn't biked much, so I had all these knee pains, and there were super, super high winds. Like, we were having to pedal going downhill, and it was just awful. So I ended up stashing the bikes at that gas station, um, hitchhiked back to Albuquerque, and then
then rented a car, minivan, got back there, picked up the bike, drove to my friend's place, Gerald's um, spot in Phoenix, spent a week there letting my knee heal, and then he drove us down to the border, just uh, start the Arizona Trail. So originally, you know, I'm gonna bike from New Mexico down to Arizona and start all that, but injuries and whatnot, but yeah, I don't remember that spot. Um, weird feeling of like deja vu and whatnot, but we weren't able to get a hitch that first night, so we got there and it was pretty terrible weather. Ended up biking down this road I'm walking down right now, which this is actually the official CDT right now. Um, you walk down this road to El, Ma El Mal Pais National Monument. I don't think it's a national park, it's a national monument. And uh, then it hooks around to the east. Um, several ways out of Grants. Last year I took the alternate more on the west side of Grants that has you going through the Zuni Canyon and then you take the Zuni Akima Trail through these lava fields towards Pai Town. Uh, this year it's going to take a more direct route, stay on this road towards Pai Town. So it's pretty much, yeah, all roads. And it's this paved road and then dirt road, 70 miles to Pai Town. It's only 2,500 feet of total gain in those 70 miles, so very flat, very easy walking. That'll be nice. And hopefully, shouldn't be any snow. But yeah, 2018, bike down this road. It was snowing. It was like late March, I think. And just camped randomly along the side here. So, never thought I'd be back through this again. El Mal Pais, Lava Rocks and Lava Tubes. So walkie talkie stayed in town yesterday. She wasn't feeling good. I'm worried that she got Giardia um, from the water in the last stretch. This time of year, you know, if your water filter freezes, it uh, doesn't filter out all the crap anymore. And with it being so damn cold all these nights, all it takes is you know, half an hour of inattention, not putting the filter away. I've got mine sitting right here in a pocket, inner pocket, and that's pretty much where it stays unless I'm actively filtering. Um, yeah, just a little bit of inattention that can cause it to freeze, and then you don't even know it, and then you're essentially drinking this water unfiltered. When I hiked the CDT the first time in 2018, I got sick in Chama, New Mexico with Giardia, and that was the sickest I'd ever been. Just constant vomiting and diarrhea, and had to go home because I couldn't even walk a quarter mile. Ended up um, losing it was like 15 or 16 pounds in just two weeks. And that was after three months of biking and three months of hiking. So I was already down, you know, to like 175. So I was down about 15 pounds. And then from that state, lost another like 15, 16 pounds. It's very sick. It took months to recover from that. 
So hopefully that's not what it is for walkie talkie and she can recover and finish this out. There's one, two, three, four cows and one bull, bull elk. I am at La Ventana Arch. It is not something you expect to see when you're just walking down the highway. It's pretty cool. Um, you get Utah vibes, this whole area. It's got the red rock and sandstone and arches. It's pretty cool. is really the middle of nowhere. It's 5.30. Sun has pretty much set. Done about 35 miles already and then walk for another uh, two hours. It'll be 41 miles. There's a ranch up here, TLC Ranch, that has water and we'll let hikers camp there. Um, this will be the first time doing 40 miles in probably two months. It's been a while. The cold weather has really slowed things down, but so much faster on a flat road and then, yeah, get to the ranch. It'll be a short day to Pie Town tomorrow and uh, stay at the toaster house. At the TLC Ranch, this is where I slept last night. Right there on the ground there. They keep water here for hikers. And uh, yeah, they let you camp here. It's just a private, private ranch and it's 16 miles outside of Pie Town and there's really not much water or anything in this stretch. It's a lot of private property just along this road that you walk so it's really nice that they're here and provide this really kind kindness for hikers. Probably one of the most boring stretches on the trail. This is Pie Town. Tiny, tiny place. And pretty much that is it. The entire town. This is the famous toaster house. Staying here tonight. where I stayed last night. This for the whole season. Jefferson. <laughs>